The political divide in our country now reaching new lows. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders kicked out of a restaurant Friday night just for working for President Trump, while actor Seth Rogen refuses to take a photo with former Speaker Paul Ryan and berates him in front of his children. But is there any way to reverse the personal attacks and get back to, you know, disagreeing respectfully? Let's ask our panel, former Clinton staffer and founder of TheFlipSide.io, Anafi Wahed, uh, GOP Councilman Joe Borelli, and former criminal defense attorney Emily Panca Compagno, which I got to think, Emily, right? Ish? For, yes, Thank you. got you. it. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Emily, so I'll start with you. Uh, this <laughs> public confrontations of people in front of their kids in restaurants, is this what the resistance has come to? It seems like it is. And I think what's so troubling to us is that it's so hypocritical for the reasons that the left purports that the right is so repulsive to them, which is intolerance and, and an alienation or refusal to engage, is exactly what they're demonstrating. And what saddens me, too, is that the platforms that and the opportunity that those people refuse to take Really, all it does is does a disservice to everyone else. Like, for example, Seth Rogen, that was at an Alzheimer's event. He hmm. could have used that platform to say, Speaker Ryan, I, I would love to discuss more about Alzheimer's and then take a photo together and then say, at least this we can agree on. And let's call awareness yeah. to this philanthropic endeavor and, and this science aspect that needs research. But instead, it's a lost opportunity to engage and discuss and, again, further what should be respectful discourse. Joe, how much of this responsibility falls on Democratic or left-wing leadership? I mean, they're screaming resist. They're screaming impeach 45. Then you see rank-and-file folks who own restaurants mirroring that right, conduct. We, we, should, we, we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, essentially, when you disagree with someone on the left, it's instant in, uh, excommunication, whether it's Chick-fil-A or the Red Hen or wherever. This is the problem. They are dehumanizing people who are Republicans, right? There was a controversy last week about the border. Difference of opinion, we all get that. But Republicans weren't just wrong because they had a bad policy. Policy. They were compared to Nazis. They were compared to terrorists. ICE was a terrorist agency all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be a surprise when we see regular liberal business owners think, not, not even think twice about, you know, discriminating someone because of political beliefs. Yeah. And Afi, now you say there's a bit of a difference between what happened to Seth Rogen and what happened to Sarah Sanders. Why? I do. So I, I take your point that Seth Rogen did not behave in the way we would hope um, that celebrities use their status uh, to actually benefit their own cause. But in one case, we have Seth Rogen, who is exercising his uh, freedom of expression, or not to in this case. Uh, as we all know, a single photo can actually generate a thousand op-eds. So if he didn't want to be in, seen endorsing Paul Ryan, I think that's different from a business refusing service to a group of people because of their political beliefs. That, to me, is a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope that leads Absolutely. where? I mean, I mean, is, it, is this something that, that liberals have seen from conservatives, or are we seeing it now because they hate Trump so much they do anything they can at any level? Certainly there is an outrage machine on both sides, and I do think we are getting closer and closer every day to the brink. Um, I think, unfortunately, the lesson many people took from the 2016 election on the left is that half the country is somehow narrow-minded or bigoted. Uh, instead of asking ourselves the hard question, which is, how can we do better? How can we better appeal so that we don't have to always go to the negative and say these people are evil and instead say here's why we think we are right. Joe, they they are blinded by hatred. Your competitor Morning Joe put out a tweet this week saying, you know, maybe if you support Trump you're not a racist yourself, but you support a racist. Imagine if you said that on t I mean, you, you, you would be ashamed of yourself. Your of family course. would be ashamed of yourself. This is the level w which it, it has come to. You can't just like President Trump or think he's doing a good job. You are evil. You are wrong if you support him. Thankfully, not many people watch Morning Joe, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Emily, uh, <laughs> in, in this, Christian Nielsen, another example of someone who's been confronted in public, the DHS secretary, at a restaurant, screamed at outside of her home, protesters going at her. Um, it, it is, it, here's a, here's a, a, a picture of what happened to her at a Mexican restaurant. Of course, everyone pointing out the so-called irony that how could she be at a Mexican restaurant with the policies they pursued at the border. Is there any way to separate, shouldn't we be able to separate the private opportunity for people to have a meal and the policies that they're pursuing? You would absolutely think so. And I also think that the perspective has been reduced to such a single dimensional viewpoint. I mean, Saudi Arabia just lifted their ban on women drivers mm. on Friday. And now we have the media dissecting the first lady's jacket. I, I, and these issues have been reduced to a single photograph or a single soundbite, when to me, they're so much more complex and nuanced. Again, that engagement would really foster um, 
a benefit to everyone because every issue has so much more to it. Instead, it's reduced to yelling shame again at, at her at a restaurant. I also point out, too, that a lot of these vociferous protests lately have been directed towards female GOP uh, participants and elected officials. Mm -hmm. And to me, that kind of screams again of the hypocrisy of those so engaged Very in interesting point. Would the same conduct ever be tolerated against female members of the Obama administration or Obama himself? I think the question answers itself. Yeah. Uh, all of you, thank you very much for this very nuanced, thoughtful discussion. Appreciate it. Maybe the rest of the country can learn.